Okay, shalom everyone and welcome to another Thursday night Torah study and tonight we are on Parashat Kitavo. So we're looking at Deuteronomy 26 verse 1 to 29 verse 8 and I titled the study tonight the gift of God that enables us to walk in righteousness. And so in this week's Torah portion we read about the offering of the first fruits in Deuteronomy 26 and 1 through 19 and then the curses that were pronounced on Mount Ebel in Deuteronomy 27 and the blessings that were pronounced on Mount Gerizim on, in Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 to 14 then the consequences of disobedience to God's commands in, in verses 15 to 68 of chapter 28 and then the covenant with Moab in Deuteronomy 29 verses 1 through 8 and so the scriptures I thought we would look at tonight are from Deuteronomy chapter 27 and it's related to the the curses that are pronounced on Mount Ebel and that we could we could learn something and I learned I always learn something but um in in the opening well it's not quite the opening passage in in verse 9 of the book of Deuteronomy in chapter 27 it says and verse 9 and 10 is the verses we're looking at it says the following it says and it says that that means that the Moshe and the, and the priests, the Levites, spoke unto all of Israel. And then they go on, they say, Lemor, they say, Hasket Ushma Israel. And the word Hasket is to be silent or to be quiet. And listen, Israel. And then Moshe says, Hayom haze nihyata la'am la'aranai lohecha. Okay, so that means that today, you, this day, you will be a people to the Lord your God. And then in verse 11, it says, Veshemata beko aranai lohecha. Okay, you're to observe or to, to listen to the voice of the Lord your God. Vesita and do et ha mitzvotai, to do his commandments, the et hukav, to end his statutes, as your ani mitzav ha hayom, that I command you today. Okay, so uh, the Moshe says in in the priest, but I'm I'm assuming that uh, Moshe is the one narrating here, and so he he says, he see, he he tells the people he says hasket. Ushma Yisrael, you know, be quiet and listen. So it, basically, the, he's he's telling them to pay attention. You know, they're trying to he's trying to get their t- attention. And while reading verse uh, verse nine, he says he says Hayom Haze Nichyata Laam Laaranai Lahecha, meaning that today or this day you will become the people of the Lord your God. I I read that and I thought that was really interesting. That there's a, that Moshe makes this statement because why why would Moshe say now only now that you would become the people of God you know was was it due to their going to cross over into the promised land you know I thought they were already the people of God right and, and do the people only become the people of God when living in the promised land you know I, I think that's a good question on um, what what Moshe is trying to say here. Rashi, he says the following, his interpretation on this, in part two of his commentary, he's looking at Hayom Haze Nikyata Am. Okay, so that to stay you have become the people of the Lord, your God. And he says, on each day it shall appear to you as though it were today that you have entered into the covenant with him. So uh, Rashi's interpretation is that Moshe spoke these words so that they would remember and consider every day of their lives as if, they had entered into this covenant, a new covenant with the Lord. Now Rashi explains the word nichata, meaning that you have become, to say that Moshe was referring to a previous covenant, and it was the acceptance of the hukim, the laws of the Torah, with a solemn oath that caused them to become a nation. And the reason this is written in this way was because on that day they accepted upon themselves the blessings and the curses which would be said on Mount Gerizim and Mount um, Abel, you know, respectively. And it is because 
they have become a nation of people that Moshe describes them as being a faithful people. And he said, he says, uh, he describes that in verse 10, where he says, that you are to listen to the voice of the Lord your God, and then you are to do his commandments and the and his his hukatav, you know, his statutes, the Ani Mitzav Chayom that I command you today. And so uh, what I, I thought, well, reading through the Torah portion, reading through specifically this part of the of the Torah, I you know I think it's very important to note the points of order in which Moshe is is speaking here. And the people become a nation under God as his people by faith in their solemn oath. You know, once the people have become God's people, then they are expected to live faithfully before him, right? And this is this is uh, I think this is a this is a very Torah centric principle. You know, that people be, enter into a covenant by faith, right, in believing and with confession, right, and then as a child of God, you know, they've entered into the kingdom, right, and, and then they live their lives. Here's how you live your life for the Lord. Yeah, this is what's expected. You know, that we're we're not to live in sin anymore. You know, when we read the New Testament and we see. Uh, the we hear the gospel message, you know, the, the salvation of God in the Messiah, and when we it, it, it follows a very similar, a similar approach, if you could you would call it that. But um, it's, a, it's maybe a better way is to say a points of order in the sense that it is by faith and confession, and then we live it out, right? And it is the same with our faith in Yeshua that we we believe what He has done. That he laid his life down for us, and then we uh, become the children of God, right? And then we live our faith, you know. And we we have to continue studying God's word in order to learn what that means, what it means to live for God. You know, how do we do that? And, and the scriptures they talk about that. Now, once the people became the children of God, you know, be, be, once they became God's people they are then expected to live faithfully before him. And, and he expects that of us too today. You know, what we note is that the mitzvotav, his commandments, and his hukat, hukat, hukav, okay, his, and his laws or his statutes were given to a faithful people, to people who already had faith, okay? And these were not given so they could earn their way into the family of God or, or to become a people of God, right? You know, these, these are given to a people who already believe and who are already in a covenant with God by faith. And th- I think this is a very important concept here because today in the modern theologies that we, we see going on you know, in the church is that the Torah was given so that man can earn his way into heaven. And, and that just, that's just not the case. That, that's not what the Torah actually says when we study the text we actually see something completely different. And just as exactly what we're seeing here, just in these two verses from Deuteronomy chapter 27, verses 9 and 10. And so these, these, these commands, you know, over and over again, the Torah reveals these things to us concerning this purpose, the purpose of the commands, the purpose of the mitzvot and the chukim, right? And, and these were given to one who is already a child of God by faith. You know, and this is how and why Paul argued so vehemently concerning faith and works and that one should trust in God and not in his own works and it, or and not in his own ability to keep Torah. You know, anyone who's tried knows you know, that it, it's, it's, you know, we, we fail, right? And uh, Paul speaks of this at length in Romans, in the book of Romans. You know, similar, similarly, we hear what it is that God expects from his people and simply by the way in which God instructs his people to stand on Mount Gerizim and um, I got a typo there I have to remember to change that on Mount Ebal and pronounce the curses and on Mount Gerizim the, the blessings right and um, so the scriptures we're looking at specifically are from Deuteronomy 27 verses 9 to 26 let me read through that it says the following it says then Moshe and the Levitical priests stood or spoke to all Israel, saying, Be silent and listen, O Israel. This day you have become a people for the Lord your God. You shall therefore obey the Lord your God and do, the, do his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today. 
Moshe, Moshe also charged the people on that day, saying, When you cross the Jordan, these shall stand on Mount Gerizim to bless the people, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Joseph, and Benjamin. And for the curse, there shall stand on Mount Ebal, Reuben, Gad, Asher, Zebulon, Dan, and Naphtali. And the Levites shall then answer and say to all the men of Israel with a loud voice, Curse is the man who makes an idol or a molten image, an abomination to the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsmen, and sets it up in secret. And all the people shall answer and say, Amen. And curse is he who dishonors his father or mother, and all the people shall say, Amen. Curse is he who moves his neighbor's boundary mark, and all the people shall say, Amen. And curse is he who misleads a blind man on the road, and all the people shall say, Amen. Curse is he who distorts the justice due to an alien, orphan, and widow, and all the people shall say, Amen. Curse is he who lies with his father's wife because he has uncovered his father's skirt, and all the people shall say, Amen. Curse is he who lies with any animal, and all the people shall say, Amen. Curse is he who lies, lies with his sister, the daughter of his father or his mother, and all, shall, all the people shall say, Amen. Curse is he who lies with his, father, or with his mother-in-law, and all the people shall say, Amen. Curse is he who strikes his neighbor in secret, and all the people shall say, Amen. And curse is he who accepts a bribe to strike down an innocent person, and all the people shall say, Amen. And curse is he who does not confirm the words of this law by doing them, and all the people shall say, Amen. Okay, so that was Deuteronomy 27, verses 9 through 26. And so we read that um, the Lord commanded, commanded the people, these tribes, to stand on Mount Gerizim. And, and I got... I got that right, you know, but it was Mount Ebel that was the curses. I got to, I really got to change this. This is a significant um, error, error on my part. But um, so uh, we, we pick up in, in verse 15 here and read what it says. And so, and I think what, what, I'm, what we're trying to look at here is what I think is, is what the Lord is expecting is expecting out of his people that they would not do these things okay and so in verse 15 it says aror haish asher yase pesel so curse is the man that makes an idol umasaka tavat adonai maase yad yadai harash meaning that um or a molten image is abomination to the lord the work of the hand of the craftsmen, the psalm besater, and places it in secret, and then it's it, the the final phrase veyanu kohaam veamru amen. Okay, so and they said, and then all the people answered and said, Amen. Okay, so here in verse fifteen, you know, we we're told how idolatry is a toavad; it is an abomination to the Lord, and it's interesting how. The Lord speaks of the intimate nature of idolatry in the sense of where it says, it says, the uh, Psalm Basater, you know, that, that he, he sets it up in secret. And so the point I think I felt when, when I was reading this was in the sense that um, this idolatry comes in many forms, you know, because it, it isn't necessarily just, you know, today, it isn't necessarily just a a graven image or an actual idol. It can be a, a money or it can be possessions or, or something like that. And so I, the, the way when he says it places it in a secret, he's speaking of something that is uh, of a very intimate nature and it can come in many forms like in, in the heart, right? And God sees this and so it's not possible to hide one's idolatry from the Lord. And, and Moshe is pointing this out right here by mentioning that one who places such a thing, an idol, up in secret. Now, the verse 17 or 16, it says the following. It says, Arur makle aviv the emo. Okay, so cursed is the man who disrespects his mom or his, his dad, and or dishonors his mom or his dad. And, and then Vamar Kohaam Alman and all the people said Amen. And so the second curse here is with regard to dishonoring mother and father. And the word makla means to become contemptible. I thought that was interesting because 
it's not the same word that's used in the Ten Commandments in, in Exodus chapter 20, right? And so what we find here is that this, this idea that Moshe is trying to draw out is that this holding contempt for a parent, and so it's something that recurs from within in the heart. You know, again, you know, we see we see this this uh, this heart issue. You know, that it's on the inside that's that's dishonoring, right? That the, it, the dishonoring begins in the heart, which is then lived out in our actions by the way that uh, one treats mother and father, and then. In verse 17, it says, Arur masig gevul re'ehu. Okay, and then it goes on, Vamar kol ha'am, amen. And they all said, amen. So uh, here is, cursed is the man who moves the boundary stone of his neighbor. Okay, and, and so the word masig means to divert or be disloyal or to turn away. You know, and he, here it's translated in the NASB as removed. And so the idea of Moving a landmark is like moving a property line in order to steal property from a neighbor. And the rabbis connect this to something that's done at nighttime. Because you know, if we look in the rabbinic literature on this particular verse, they, they're, they're talking about that. And there's also a parallel to leading a blind person astray, which is a, another one of the curses later on here. And Rashi states that maskid or masig, is, has the same meaning as is the verb that's written in Isaiah 59, verse 14, and it says, and he turned backwards, kusag. And, and so we note how the land is given by God, and the one who violates his command is like as one as turning back a command. And, and it's not just in the sense of the land that was given, but we're talking about stealing, we're talking about uh, injustice, you know, and um, having... Uh, Unequal weights. I think that would that would also play in in the effect here in the sense of uh, taking from your neighbor, and so um, there, there's this idea here of of turning or diverting or turning one away from the command. And I thought this is an interesting parallel to the idea of the of one of turning someone or causing someone to turn from the command of God. You know is is would a curse fall upon such a person? What do you think about that? I think that's that's a really good question. Then in verse 18, we see uh, the following, and it says, Arur mashke ever bederecha. Okay, and it says, Ve'omar koha'am, amen. And then all the people said, amen. So it says, cursed is the one who leads astray the blind in the way or in the path okay and, and so this word mashke okay and it means stray or stagger or do wrong or lead astray or mislead and it's written in the heat feel verbal pattern the heat feel stem is generally used to express causative action in an active voice so here the one who violates this command is taking action to actually harm the blind as opposed to having compassion and mercy to do what is right on be on a person's behalf and this can come in many forms you know if we you can look at someone does, that isn't even blind physically that they just may not have an understanding of the truth of what what's uh what's going on in in any particular thing in the world and so uh, i i believe that these commands are, are a little bit more broad you know in the sense of having compassion and having mercy on one another and speaking the truth and then you know it's always these things are always drawing us back to the truth of god and then in verse 19 it says arur mate mishpat gever yatum the almana the markoha am amen okay so curse is the man that distorts mate that distorts justice, mishpat, right? And this verse speaks of the one who subverts the rights of another human being, you know, and, and the rabbis parallel, parallel this to the one who has carnal relations with their closest relatives and domestic animals. And then, no, interestingly, that's the very next, next thing here. But the, we note that this is also something that is done in secret, right? And 
the only two sins are listed as being committed openly, you know, which are idolatry and violent behavior against one's neighbor. And we note in Deuteronomy 27, verse 18, it states that idolatry that is set up in secret is an abomination, right? And idolatry will eventually become discovered, just like the one who is violent with his neighbor. Now, the Torah adds the Psalm Basker, okay? It sets it up in secret as there are courts which are able to take action against such perpetrators. So the, the scriptures mention also the ger, the stranger, the yatum, the orphan, and the almana, the, the widow, and because these are those who are most likely to uh, not to receive justice. Now, these are who are the powerless, you know, if injustice comes, so that they have no, uh, no one to help them, right? And they're helpless. So the idea is that one must exercise mercy and compassion towards those who are less fortunate, okay? So again, this, this draws us back to having mercy. Now, uh, the next set of verses is um, 20 through 23. So in 20, it says, Arur shochev im eshet aviv. Okay, so curses the man that lays with the wife of his father. Kigila kenaf aviv. You know, because he, he, um, he lifts up the, the skirt of his, his uh, father. Okay, and then Vermar Koha Am Amen, and all the people said Amen. And in verse 21, Aurur Shochev Im Kol Behema. Okay, so curse is the man that, that uh, sleeps with or has relations with any of the, the beasts, you know, Behema, the, the beasts of the field, or any creature, right? And then Vermar Koha Am Amen, and all the people said Amen. In verse 22, it says, Aurur Shochev Im Achoto, bat avi, o bat imo. Okay, so curses the man that lies with his sister, the daughter of his father, and the daughter, or the daughter of his mother. And it says, Vamar ko ha'am, amen. And then in verse 23, it says, Arur shochev im chotanto, chotanto. Okay, so curses the man who sleeps with his mother in law. And it says, Vermar Koha Am Amen. Okay, so all the people said Amen. Okay, so Deuteronomy 27, verses 20 to 24 speaks of sexual sins. Okay, so we've got the one who's cursed with lays, who lies with his father's wife, or who lies with a beast, or lies with his sister, either the daughter of his father or mother, and or who lies with his mother in law. Okay, and so the, these commands. Are obvious. You know, he, the one who sins sexually in these ways, receives a curse on their lives from God. Okay. Now, in in verse twenty four, it says, "Arur maka reehu besater." Okay. So, curses the man who strikes his neighbor in secret. Okay. So, there's there's where the striking in neighbor is is in secret is is accursed. And we just mentioned, and Velmer uh, Koha Am Amen, and all the people said Amen. And so we see here the command on striking the neighbor in secret. And the question is, why add the word Basater, right, in secret? And the idea is that if one would hit someone in public, would it be permitted, right? So you're, you're hitting someone when no one else is looking, right? And again, this can have multiple applications in life, not just with literally physically striking someone. And then verse 25, it says, Arur lokeach shochad lehakot nefesh dam naki. Okay, so um, curse is the man who takes a shochad, a, a bribe, to strike the soul blood of the innocent. Okay, and so basically it's um, one is taking a bribe to shed blood, right, in some way. The idea of taking a bribe is related to a being a false witness. Ibn Ezra draws this out, and this is related to perverting justice, and the example is given of causing the one who is innocent to be condemned to death by, perjury of temp, uh, uh, by a perjured temp testimony. And then the last verse in, in the text, it says, Arur asher lo yikam or yakim 
et ha devare ha Torah ha zot la sot otam vamar kol ha'am amen. Okay, so curses the man who does not establish the words of this Torah to do them, and all people say amen. Okay, so what's interesting here, and I did not put this in the study. I was thinking about this when I was going over this study right before tonight here. But uh, it's interesting the way it's it's written because curse is the one that does not does not establish yakim does not establish Torah right and what does Paul say in Romans three thirty one we establish Torah okay you check it out look at the Hebrew translation you know it's very interesting this is the the word um, yakim to to indicate this this lifting up or this establishing the the command of God in the lives of the believers. You know, so this again comes back to what God is expecting of us as a people of faith, right? That we are to live out our faith and that we should be looking at our lives to see if we are producing this kind of fruit. And I'm talking about personal inspection. I'm not talking about hopping the fence and looking at your neighbor's fruit. I'm talking about your own fruit. And if we consider what's being said here, right, in the list of curses, it's, it's easy to understand the moral intent of the Torah, right? And we note how the nations involve themselves in these ways of immorality and idolatry. You know, the, the real question for us is if we were to limit ourselves to simply the moral aspects of the commands, when we quickly realize our need for the mercy from God, right? And on, on the day of our death, will we trust in our own adherence to the moral commands as our appeal before a perfect and holy and absolutely righteous God. Can we do that? Yeah, I don't think so, right? And in the point is, is that we need God's help, that his presence in our lives to keep us from sin. And, and this is what the, the gospel message is all about, you know, about the presence of God dwelling in our midst, the Torah-centric principle, right? And the presence and the power of God in via His Spirit dwelling within. Now, in Parashat Beshalach, we read the following. And so I got a got a different uh, slide here. Okay, so we read the following. It says, "Veyomer im shamea tishma leko Adonai lechecha," and it says, "And if you will, you will listen to obey." The voice of the Lord your God, Behayashar, Be'anayv, and do what is right in your in His eyes. Ta say, um, okay, to do what is right in His eyes, right there. And is Veha'azan ta lemitzvotayv, and and to give ear unto His command. Veshamar ta kol hukav, okay, and to that you will keep all of His statutes. And ko hamachala a share, and so all of your illnesses that seem to that I place the mitzrayim in Israel lo asim alecha I will not place on you, and it says ki ani Adonai rofecha because I am the Lord your healer. Okay, so. Um, there are several, I think there are several significant points that are being made according to this verse here, and, and it was from uh, Exodus chapter 15, verses 26, just verse 26. And Moshe begins, he says, Im Shomea Tishma. Okay, so let's go to a different highlighter. Im Shomea Tishma, right here. Okay, and if you diligently listen, right? And the first part is to be careful to listen, meaning that we are to pay close attention, right? To Lekol Adonai Lehecha, to the voice of the Lord your God. And this reminds us of God speaking to Moshe from the midst of the burning bush, or of God speaking to all of Israel at Sinai. In order to hear God's ver voice, the first thing we must do is humble ourselves before God, to listen what He is saying. You listen to what He is saying. You listen to His word, right? And read his word, right? The very very next thing, it says, it says, uh, where is that? Vahayasar, uh, Vahayashar, and I've Tase. 
Like I said, you are to do what is right in his eyes. You know, and we note this word, yashar, means to to um, straight or right or correct. And, and this is how it is said to that one is to walk uprightly before him. And David wrote that in his psalm, Psalm 25, verse 8, which are um, to do the acts of charity and justice. You know, la so tzedakah o mishpat, right, in Genesis 18, verse 19. And, you know, this is the narrow path that Yeshua spoke about, according to Matthew 7, verse 14, that those who are upright, who walk the narrow path, who do what is right in the eyes of the Lord, are known by the good fruit that they produce in their lives. And then Yeshua taught on this in, in Matthew 7, verses 15 to 23. And the verse goes on, and it says, Veha azanta lamitzvotav. Okay, so you are to, and you give ear to the um, to the command, right? And it, literally, to to listen to the command, right? And one is actively listening in this case, actually participating in hearing by paying attention. You know, the reason the giving of the ear is so important is in what God is revealing to us in His Word, the revealed will of God, right? And this is why. Uh, God's word is given to us so that we could know him. Not just that, we could know what he's expecting of us. We can know how to have a relationship with him. We know how to have a relationship with others, just as we saw in the curses in Deuteronomy 27, verses 20 to uh, 24, right? And so the the idea here is that we are to diligently, you know, Shomea Tishma, we're to diligently listen to the voice of the Lord and thoroughly hear what is being said. You know, if we do not live our lives according to his word, you know, um, then, you know, we wouldn't, we won't be in a, in, in a relationship. We can't be in a relationship with him, you know, right? Now, James, he, James wrote, and he said that, uh, he said, hey, you ose hadavar, you know, that to be a doer of the word, low rock, Shomim, right? Not only a listener. Pen teramu et atzmechem, that lest you deceive yourself. And so the idea is that one does not simply hear the word and nothing else. You know, just look at the Bible and say, oh yeah, paperweight, right? And so um, we're not doing that. We're actually taking to heart what we are reading, what we are learning, what God has to say to us. And we are seeking his help to help us to live for him. And so we're not, we don't merely hear the truth of the word, we're also living it. Keeping God's decrees. You know, just as it says, v'shamarta kol hukav. And we are to keep all of his laws, right? And this phrase suggests how we are to shamar, we are to, we are to guard the decrees of God as something valuable to keep in the heart with all diligence. In Exodus 15, verse 26, it says, it concludes, and it concludes with all of your illnesses that I, that I placed on the Egyptians, I will not place upon you because I am the Lord, your healer, okay, that heals you. And, and this describes our feeling, our finding of healing in the Lord God Almighty and concludes by honoring God and his word as leading to our protection and to a personal healing. And this comes when we heed the truth of God in our lives and we live it, right? And you notice how this verse speaks of obedience, of deeds more than simply reciting a creed. You know, because you hear a lot it says, oh, I got, I got uh, someone to say the sinner's prayer, right? And, but, okay, now what, right? Now what? Is that it? Is that all, right? I mean, there, there's more to a life of a believer than just a creed. And we note the, the curses that are listed in this week's Torah portion are also involving acts of obedience, of deeds, that curse is the one who makes an idol or dishonors his mother or father or who makes a, or who moves a boundary stone, right? This is, there's thievery, there's theft, there's dishonesty, you know, and, and who commits all sorts of sexual immoralities, you know, the sins that the nations do, right? 
and the one who takes a bribe or the one who strikes a neighbor. You know, the emphasis again here is on how to how we are to live our lives based upon our having faith in the one true God in Yeshua. Yeshua said in John 13, verse 17, if you know these things, happy are you if you do them. You know, therefore, we are to be joyful in our obedience to God, right? And also note that Yeshua warned us saying in Matthew 7, 21 to 23, he says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. And on that, on that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, cast out demons in your name, and do many mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you worker of lawlessness. Right? So obeying God's word by living it should be a joy to us. Right? And a salvation that is in the Messiah, in Mashiach, right? Yeshua. And in the dwell, indwelling of God's Spirit, His Holy Spirit. This is the gift of God. This is what enables us to walk in righteousness of life according to God's Word. You know, it is, it is only the, the power of God in our lives that we are able to walk in His Word in any kind of consistent form or fashion. And so that is the, the power of God in our lives. That is the love of God in our lives. You know, He loves us so much that even while we were sinners, that he laid his life down for us, and what a fantastic thing. And so um, that's what I have for the Torah portion for this week. And if you enjoyed the study, give me a thumbs up, and uh, come back next week. We'll have more. Okay? Thanks for listening.